going to do superhero landing. Wait for it. Wahoo! Superhero landing. Good morning, beautiful people. My name is Justin Taylor. You are here at Firestorm Freerunning and Acrobatics, and today we are beginning the white rank tumbling curriculum. Let's get started. <laughs> Go and do some flips again. All right, beautiful people. We are going to get started with four of our white rank tumbling skills. Now there are eight in total, but four of these we actually went over during our parkour white rank. There's a lot of similarities between basic parkour intro and basic gymnastics tumbling. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a 60 second recap on each of these four skills. You can watch the full length tutorials somewhere, wherever those people put those cool things in and they like, they pointed them and then they appear on the screen, but I don't know if we know how to do that. So I'm just pointing at random things and hopefully you'll find it in the links down below. All right, for our 60 second breakdown, I would like to remind you real quick that going over the time limit and not being able to tell time at all is totally my thing. So when it turns out to be 94 and a half seconds, don't judge too much, okay? All right, sounds good. Oh, thank you, thank you. I appreciate when you guys respond to me. It makes me feel like I'm not just talking to myself. I do that enough on my own. I don't need help from you guys. All right, we are gonna start with our forward roll. Being able to tuck into a ball and come out of it, being able to utilize that energy is one of the most fundamental things in tumbling and flipping. This will help you not only in tumbling, but in tricking, uh, doing any type of acrobatics, parkour, free running, all that kind of fun stuff, high diving, it's gonna be very helpful. So just like when I spin around in a circle, if I stick my arms out, I slow down. And when I pull that arm in, I begin to speed up my rotation. For any of you who've been watching this for a little while, you know it's all about the centra pickle force. I hope there was a pickle right there when I did that. Maybe there's one right now, I, I, I don't know, I can't actually see it, but you guys might be able to, and that's cool. So when we do this, this same idea is what allows us to spin when we're doing a flip, or in this direction, do our flip, so we're gonna start with that forward roll. So let's begin our 60 second breakdown, and let's see if I can keep it on the clock. When we do this, we want our feet and knees together. We're going to be squatting down like this. Remember, not knees apart, knees together. I'm gonna to be placing my hands down on the ground. Notice I'm leaning forward into a tuck position. I'm not placing my hands right here, or I will fall on my head. I want those hands at a 45. I'm going to tuck my chin begin to extend my legs and bend my arms. My goal is to tuck my chin so I set my shoulders on the ground and I'm gonna tuck back into a ball right there. You'll notice when I push off the ground, my legs are straight. I'm gonna come through here and as I start to roll over, I'm gonna pull my chest towards my knees and tuck my heels to my butt, giving me that open and snap shut to be able to roll myself up. You'll notice I'm slowing down and speeding up. You'll notice my hands are forward to give me extra momentum. If my hands are behind me, I fall backwards. Do the forward roll. We're gonna stand up, and there you go. All right, guys, a lot of people have a lot of trouble during the forward roll standing up, and they have to use their hands. A lot of this comes because when you roll, your feet are out here, there's this big flat spot, right? I can't even push myself up on my feet from here. We need to get our feet as close to our butt as we can, and our shoulders as close to our knees. Now, even from here, with my hands, it can be hard for me to push my weight especially if you're a bigger guy uh, or girl, onto your feet. So the goal here is to go from that extended position as we roll with our straight legs and tucking both our heels to our butt and our shoulders to our knees. A really good practice drill for this is called our candlestick. And a candlestick looks like this. There's a couple different ways to do it, but I'll show you the most basic. I start here. From here, I got my hands to my sides, or I can roll my hands over here, a slightly more advanced version. I'll let you guys try whatever feels best for you. Some people like different versions. From here, I'm gonna try to lift my hips and extend my feet. In the beginning, most people are here. Our goal, though, is to straighten our body as much as we can. Now, I want you to pretend that you are a tree that has just been chopped. When a tree chops it and falls over, it does not bend at the waist, right? It doesn't boop, like this as it falls. So what I want you to do is I want you to fall from your shoulders straight like you're gonna fall flat on your back. And right before you hit the ground at about a 45 degree angle, you're gonna snap your heels to your butt and I'm gonna throw my hands forward, pulling my shoulders to my knees. And if we do it right, it'll roll me right up onto my toes. This is the same thing we do in a front flip, right? We go here and we throw that front flip. Notice, because I get that extra momentum and I'm in a nice tight ball that rolls with no flat spots like we did in the beginning, I have a lot of momentum. I roll right up. I don't even need to use my hands to stand up. And that is our goal. No hands when you stand up, only hands when you set your shoulders on the ground because, you know, without hands, you're going to fall on your head. And if you fall on your head too many times, you're going to end up like me. And God help you at that point. 
All right, let's move on to our next one, our lunge position. The lunge position is the cornerstone of all tumbling. Without a solid lunge, you are gonna have a lot of trouble doing your cartwheels, handstands, round offs, anything that allows you to get powerful tumbling passes. You want a good solid lunge. Most common thing I see from people is they get ready for the lunge and they're like, here. <laughs> I'm ready. If you actually try to lean forward in your lunge, almost all of your feet are off the ground. You've got no power and you're gonna have to bend at the waist and break your body position. No good for tumbling. So when we do our lunge, a mirror like this is a great learning tool. The mirror next to you will allow you to look and see if the things I'm gonna tell you to do are actually being done with your body. So I'll use the mirror real quick. We're gonna do 60 seconds, go! So in our lunge position, we want our power leg, our strong leg, what we call our posting leg in front. You'll notice my back leg is completely straight. Now I'm a pretty tall guy, so I want a pretty big lunge. The goal here is to have a straight line from our hands to our foot. You will notice there is a pretty straight line from my hand right here all the way down to my back foot. The goal is a 45 degree angle. Pretty close to that right now. The way you can tell if it's correct or not is my shoulders should be over my knee and my knee is right over the pad of my foot or my toes. If this is all lined up, I should feel a bit of pressure on the pad of my foot and just a little bit on my heel. What I don't wanna see is like this, where I can lift my toes. You can see my toes are way in front of my knee. Woohoo! no good, I'm starting to lose my balance. And if it's too far back, you can see this gets really difficult and I'm about to fall over. So, 45 degree angle, check yourself out in the mirror right there. Nice straight line, none of this stuff, no arms out here. Shoulders to your ears, shoulders over the knees over the toes. And this is our solid lunge starting position. All right, now that we've got that down, this is utilizable for handstands, front handsprings, cartwheels, round offs, all the things that are gonna let you tumble. All right, from here, we're gonna work on what's called our teeter-totter handstand. Our teeter-totter starts in that lunge position. The difference is now we're going to lean forward, set our hands on the ground, and kick up towards our handstand. If this is a new one for you, do not try to kick all the way up to a handstand. You don't know how to balance yet. You don't know how to lock your body out and control all that weight. And if you tip over, you don't know how to save yourself from falling on your head. If you do decide to do that, please take a video and send it to us because it's always fun to watch. So we're gonna get in our lunge position. 60 seconds, let's do it. So from here, our goal is to see the distance from our back foot to our front foot, which let's say right here, there we go. Now the same distance from the back foot to the front foot, front foot to where my hands are gonna go is about that line. Our goal is to lean forward like a teeter-totter. A teeter-totter does not go one side right down here where the post is, right? This side goes up, other side goes down. I try to keep that straight line. I'll begin to lean forward. Notice I'm shifting my hips over my foot and then my hands will go down as my foot goes up. You don't need to kick as high as I did. All I'm looking for here is the ability to put our weight on our hands and squeeze tight. You'll notice there's just a little tiny kick right there. The goal also is, is as I come down, you'll notice my foot goes to the same place. My hands come up as my foot goes down. We are keeping our head in between our arms right here so all of our bones are kinematic stacking. We don't want our head sticking out like this. This is a very common thing when people do it. They look at their hands and they go, hoo, hoo. But then you get to lay down all sexy, so that's kind of cool. So keep your head in between your arms, lock your shoulders to your ears, set the hands down, little baby kick, and plant that weight onto your hands so you can get used to how it feels to support your weight. Good? Awesome. Let's move on to spider walk handstand. There's like a Tom Holland joke in there somewhere. Okay. Who's Tom Holland? Isn't, isn't that the name of the guy that's playing Spider-Man? Tom, isn't it Tom Holland? Oh yeah. Is it a different name? My bad, my bad. Okay, cool. I feel like I should be holding a, you know, the, the thingy, the mugshot thingy. Yes. Do one of those <laughs> Do that one or it's like the, hey, you know, one of those mugshots. All right, why are we talking about mugshots? It's time for our spider walk handstand. All right. Our teeter-totter is what allows us to get into our handstand. Once you're in the handstand, handstands are one of the hardest things to learn because it is not a basic strength thing. It is not just a little skill you're learning. You have to retrain your forearms, your fingertips, and your entire nervous system to balance and feel what it is to balance upside down and auto-correct. The easiest way to do this, the best possible training method that you can do is a spider walk handstand. All right, I'm gonna show you guys. I actually want you guys to come on over here to the side. It'll make a lot more sense. So what I'm gonna do, we'll see if we can do that 60 seconds on the clock. All right, we're gonna place our hands on the ground. We're gonna put our feet on a flat vertical wall. 
I'm gonna walk my feet up. Once my feet are up and I have this nice straight line with my body, I'm gonna slowly walk my hands in until they're roughly like 18 inches or so away. Now at this point, you'll notice I'm keeping my head in between my arms. I don't wanna see any of this. You can see this big curve in my back. No curves in the back. It takes out your stomach muscles. We wanna be right here. I can still look at my hands, but I'm not arching the back. From here, I'm gonna very slowly split one foot. You will notice if you look from the side, as I split this foot, my hips are slowly starting to move away from the wall and all the weight is starting to generate onto my fingertips. You can see me pushing my fingertips into the ground even though I'm not touching the wall anymore. All I'm doing here is allowing myself to slowly load the weight onto my fingertips and forearms so I can practice my balance without trying to kick up and down. If you start to tip over, what you wanna do is just slowly move one hand and let your feet fall to the ground. This one's really important though. If you do this a couple minutes every day, you will not only build the strength in your forearms and your fingertips to balance yourself, you'll start to feel what it feels like to balance yourself. You'll start to tip a little bit and your body, that sensation you feel, will let you know, oh crap, this is what it feels like when I'm about to tip over. You push down with the fingertips and you push yourself back. This one is just a lot of repetition. You have to do it again and again to build the muscles through here. You won't normally have them. It's just like getting on rings. You're gonna shake or a slack line. Anybody on a shack, slack line? You just, ah, ah. all right? It's just because your body does not have those fast twitch muscles. You have to do it for a few weeks every day for a few minutes and your body will build those up and compensate. <laughs> Woo! All right, we went through four different skills. We did our forward roll stand up, a proper lunge position, utilizing that lunge position into our teeter-totter handstand and what happens after a teeter-totter handstand, actually getting and balancing the handstand and building the muscle, we used our spider walk handstand. Once you get your teeter-totter really well from a solid starting lunge position, I just keep going back and forth as long as I remember which one was which. Then once we get over here to our spider walk handstand, we're building the strength. Lunge goes to a solid teeter-totter. And if you have a solid spider walk handstand, <laughs> Tom Holland, you screwed me. If you got a, a solid spider walk handstand, you'll be able to utilize that teeter-totter and balance yourself in your handstand. The forward roll and standing up is just getting you prepped for when we're eventually gonna go into flips and our backward rolls. Also really good for saving yourself when you eat crap. So if you start practicing your handstand and you tip over and you go, oh God, I'm gonna die. You use the arm strength and forearm strength you built from your spider walk handstand and you practice your forward roll and you set yourself onto your shoulders, you do a forward roll. Set. Oh God, I'm gonna die. <laughs> oh, JK, I'm alive. But that one will come at another time when we go a bit more in depth. All right, guys, I love your beautiful faces. I've really missed you guys during the parkour curriculum. Lately, we've just been doing a bunch of mobility drills. Honestly, guys, before you train this stuff, go out and do the mobility drills. Do your mobility drills and do your warm up. Just do it! If you're young, you're not gonna feel it now. But really quickly, 25 is gonna hit and all of a sudden you're not gonna heal like you used to. And you're gonna be like, how come every time I do a flip it hurts? It's cause you were dumb and you didn't do your mobility drills. Like somebody I know, like this guy. So uh, don't do that thing so you can do stuff forever. But do the thing so you can do stuff forever. You know what I'm saying? You were lying, you didn't follow any of that, did you? And I appreciate your honesty. All right guys, I love you very much. Again, my name is Justin Taylor. We're here at Firestorm Freerunning. And uh, next week, we're gonna be working on some more tumbling stuff. Love you guys. Bye bye, I'm gonna go see Spider Man. Oh yeah, Spider Man. Woo 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 woo. It's gonna be a Tony Stark. Oh, wait, I don't get it. Was, oh, cause Spider-Man's up there. I forgot about that. I feel dumb. I'm gonna leave now. I'm just gonna hide back here. <laughs>